Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Two Bros Game Night. I am your host, Older Bro. I am your other host, Younger Bro. And today, we continue in Lily of the Valley's intermission epilogue ending, where, as previously, guys, we have had issues with audio and are re-recording the video. Again, yeah, we're back to freaking Two Bros fuck up. Yeah. Alright, well, this one wasn't necessarily our fault. This is probably the computer's fault. Yeah. But nothing we can do on that. So. Um, yeah, there, here's all the wall of text that we read. Yep, and I think we should probably read it again. You know what? I would love to. Unfortunately, we move on at some point. Yeah, so we should read yeah, quickly. I'm, I, I can't read too quickly, okay? I, oh, wait, all oh, this is me anyways. I met her on a hazy, su oh, right. hazy summer morning on Stafford Street. I knew who she was the moment I laid eyes on her. She was exactly like I'd imagined. She had a wild, untamed tangle of frizzy hair. Her round belly split out over the waistband of her denim jeans. She wore mismatched socks, denim. scruffy old trainers, and a woolen cardi hung precariously off her left shoulder. I don't know why she was wearing a cardigan. The weather was warm enough, but I didn't know much about her. Wow. All I knew was that her name was Evelyn Crowther, and she lives in Wales. Yeah. Yeah, she had the a gut of will to uh, yeah. live inside it. Yeah, the, <laughs> that is where I was thinking, but didn't want to say that either. <laughs> and within the next hour or so, she was going to die. Look, you know, it's very hard to make y your home homey inside of inside a whale. Inside of a whale? <laughs> it's a whale! <laughs> <laughs> Especially big white ones that have yeah. a spear in it, saying I was killed by Captain Ahab. Yeah. It shouldn't have. I've seen a lot of death in my time, and there was nothing particularly special about this woman. She wasn't a member of Mensa. She wasn't working on a cure for cancer. She wasn't even good-looking. Looks why she was incredibly How average. How dare you? I look fine. But she did, <laughs> yeah, something smile. Uh, her whole face radiated something, warmth. Something, something smile. That, something, something you should yeah, smile. That warmth was evident in every away. single nook and cranny of her gently sagging skin, from the lines about her mouth to the lines beneath her eyes. She was weighed down with enough shopping bags to feed three families. She was trying to juggle them, clutching four bags to her chest. She also weighed about 40 tons. Yeah, with another three hanging from her left hand and two from her right. But she didn't stop smiling, even though no. she should have. Yeah, this is a big, dreary world. You shouldn't be smiling. What the hell you on about making a smile like that? Yeah, seriously. I was waiting on a bench outside a supermarket. A man had tied his dog... Unfortunately, two bros can't smile anymore due to all these fuck-ups with the new computer. Yeah. A man has tied his dog to a bollard outside the shop, and I have been entertaining myself by alternately picking out shapes in the clouds in the sky and admiring the dog. It was a very attractive dog, with golden fur and uncommonly intelligent eyes. I think his name was Yeller. Maybe. Maybe it wasn't a dog at all, but some kind of spirit. Spirits have peculiar powers. The world's filled with them, but most humans never realize because they can't see them. But these were just idle thoughts yeah old yeller has to be the most famous dog movie of all time <laughs> i'll think through that <laughs> when evelyn came down the street well fuck that uh do you want a hand miss i asked oh i couldn't possibly said say evelyn, evelyn smiling i don't want to be a bother oh i'm sure it's no problem at all oh, bother. don't even worry about it you are not winnie the pooh Oh, you are rabbit. you are a woman Why of very like more it? than very little brains. It isn't a bother, I insisted. Are you just jealous of my red shirt? I'm not jealous. I'd like to help. She laughed. Go back into your hole and eat your cruddy sandwich. <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't mean to offend you. <laughs> you offended the red shirt and that's a no-no. She shifted the bags about in her arms. Robin, a few items poked out from the top shirt. of their plastic prison. A packet of jam biscuits, <laughs> several sticks of celery, a tin of tomato soup, and a honey jar. I can ha- uh, No, let's still you. <laughs> I can handle my shopping just fine, but if you wouldn't mind taking in a chair, it would be incredibly helpful. She handed me three of the nine bags, and I accepted them, taking two in my left hand and one in my right. Could you take these back to my car, parked at the end of the car cordon street? I nodded. She smiled even more warmly than before, if such a thing was possible. Her whole face was imbued with happiness. I am Queen Elizabeth. You will do what I say. At the time, I wondered why. I still wonder why. The two of us walked side by side, companionably. I felt a little bad about leaving the dog, but the march of time stops for no man or mutt. How dare you not stop for old late yeller. 
Yeah. Who's Enid, I asked after a pause. She's an old bat who lives far longer than... Yeah, who's lived far longer than the doctors thought she would, said Evelyn good-naturedly. She's in her 80s now, but I wouldn't be surprised if she lives for another 80 years. Why are you doing the shopping for her? Oh, it's always one thing or another. She misplaces her glasses or her back hurts or she has a limp in her right leg. That's what our grandma is going through yep. right now. <laughs> you don't sound very convinced. Am I? Heck, I've always thought she's trying to pull the wool over my eyes. My husband falls for it, but I wasn't born yesterday. I mean, have you seen these legs of mine? If she can do her shopping by herself, you shouldn't have to. Oh, nag, nag, nag. Can't I just be a nice person and do what I want with them for my Aunt Enid? Oh, I don't mind. Humoring. Humoring old Enid won't hurt. It keeps her happy. What about you? Doing a quick run to... Waitrose. Waitrose is no skin off my nose. It only takes a minute. It takes more than a minute. It was a figure of speech, dear. I don't understand what that is. <laughs> and Evelyn laughed. <laughs> I didn't know her very well. I just knew she was going to die soon. Come on, there was right. one thing I was sure of, however. She didn't deserve it. And she was a good woman. Oh, hey, look. Well, I, I predicted that. <laughs> but I don't get to choose who lives and dies. I don't have that authority. I just see them off. You know, I've never tested if I have that authority. I guess I could just refuse to let her die. <laughs> but, you know, why... Why rock I'll let her off with a warning of death. I'll, I'll let her <laughs> off with a warning! <laughs> now you don't stop dying there now! <laughs> you have about five seconds before your death. Just a warning. <laughs> no, she usually gives three days. <laughs> oh, sorry, yes, three days. <laughs> oh, we also talk about here about the fact that tires is misspelled. Yes. It's spelled with a Y. <laughs> uh, fuck you if you live in the UK. You're spelling tires wrong. Oh, it's so tiring. We'll just skip down to here, I guess. Rabbit, what'd you do with my tires? They were on my stroller just fine. Yeah, we'll just cut out. Uh, we'll just cut that whole box out there. <laughs> uh, we stowed the shopping away and shut the car of boot. Evelyn offered me another smile. Yeah, the box said, just let you off with a warning. Yep. You're going to die. I'll let you <laughs> off with a death warning. Does that, does that count as a death threat? <laughs> it's a death warning. No, it's a death promise. <laughs> My foot just dropped a small pebble. I watched it roll away. I have seen the future, dearie. You will die in three days' time. <laughs> something, something about her being nice to young kids. <laughs> We're just failing to read any of these lines. <laughs> Cause we're, we're Try being... to do our best to read the lines, Dad. Because we're being funnier than what we were when we tried recording this the first time. Yep. Uh, you must be a compassionate person. Oh, it takes one to know one, little dearie. I'm no, Winnie the Pooh. I'm definitely and not I have compassionate. A red shirt. <laughs> You're a bear with very little brains and very little life left. What do you mean? I'm still going. Hell, I even got my own horror movie. That is the, your death. <laughs> what are your children no, like? I finally this. asked her to get her to talk about something <laughs> else. Uh, my, you certainly know your way around us old folks. If there's one thing parents love, it's boasting about their kids Good. and about shows. Good, I want to hear all about them. You're not humoring me, are you? No, I want to know. Well, let's see, said Evelyn thoughtfully. My Hazel is around your age. She's a cheerful thing, takes after me. If she takes after you, she must be a nice girl. Oh, she's a nice girl, but she's not as beautiful as her mother. Doesn't look God. much like me parents wise, though. And I'm glad about it. Who wants to inherit this? <laughs> well, I mean, look, I don't have to call you ugly if you're going to call you oh. ugly. <laughs> I was born Queen Evelyn. Just, just don't, don't let, uh, don't let Enid hear you. Oh man. <laughs> I don't know why. I, I think you must have died on that line. Evelyn patted her stomach. Uh, Hazel does sports netball. When she was younger, she used to go horsing, or horse, horse riding. riding. Yeah, horsing around. She's always loved the outdoors. Maybe if I'd. Been born out in the countryside, I'd 
have, have loved. loved the outdoors too, but I spent my childhood reading books instead. I like reading. Books are wonderful things. Oh, also, you live in Wales. You were, born, you were born in the outdoors. You think so? Yes, I nodded emphatically. There's nothing stronger than the imagination. Oh, yes. Said Evelyn curiously. And what are your favorites? Um, Hunger Games? Hmm, Susan I Collins? I pondered, scruffing my shoes against the concrete once more. I'd read so many books in my life, it was hard to pick only a handful. I like Frances Hodgson Burnett a lot. Her stories are filled with so much magic, but I think I prefer more serious stories with sad endings. Of Mice and Men was good. It made me cry. Oh, yes, the one that everybody studies in school. Oh, that is a good one. I've just been studying that with some of my kids, actually, said Evelyn, her eyes crinkling in the corners. <laughs> Most of them think it's boring, but they kicked up merry hell when we were going over Macbeth, and that's as interesting as stories come. I'm rather fond of Shakespeare. Yeah, you and everyone else. It's hard not to be when you realize how much we owe the bard, but there's such a language barrier. I don't think studying Shakespeare does my kids much good when they still get grips with paragraphing, but I don't make the rules. I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure that, like, look, like, just because the bard was in, like, Middle English, it doesn't mean you can't understand. Like, it's not a language barrier, it's a... Like, grammar barrier, but whatever. I don't, I don't care. We should read The, the Great Gatsby. The rules, oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> the Great Gatsby was good. That was an all right movie. It was a, yeah, it was a, it, it was good, and it was a fine movie, but the ending of that just doesn't make any, it, it's just fucking terrible. It's a shame. Wait, I you were in the car. When you're forced to read a story, Where my it wife loses its charm. Shotgunned. Uh, it's a shame. Oh, oh I've, you, I've always said I've that I've always too. said that too. You're wise beyond your years. Not really. If Evelyn knew just how many years I had accumulated, she would have been surprised. Not even I know how long I've lived exactly. You eventually just kind of lose track. Yep, that's what I said. <laughs> what about your other child? Oh, yes, my boy. Said Evelyn. I would say he's at a difficult age, but he's actually in his 30s. Very well. difficult then. She reconsidered. Such of us take a little longer to adjust than others. Oh, yeah, no, Gatsby's Indian is just fucking stupid, because he just, like, the entire movie, he's super nice, and I think this is true in the book as well. He's super nice, and then he gets angry one fucking time, and then that ruins him. That's the impression you get in that fucking movie. He screams one goddamn time, and then leaves society. And it's like, what the fuck is that movie's ending? I mean, he does sort of get mad at Tom? Yeah, he he gets he gets like ultra pissed off one time, and everyone's just like, "Oh no, he's dead to us," and just leaves. It's just like, what the fuck was that ending? I need to rewatch that movie because it didn't make any sense to me, and I probably would understand it better now. Okay, what happened was so the affair, um, gets yeah, noticed out. by Tom. It yeah. gets out. And so, great... The, yeah, the Ga Gatsby. Yeah, the Gatsby and whatever whatever her name was. Yeah. Um, they go off together, and she's driving the car. Yeah. Well, as sh she was driving the car, and she hit Myrtle. Yeah. Who was the lover of Tom. Well, yeah. the, she, the girl Tom had an affair with. Yeah. <clears throat> and... Uh, basically, Gatsby told main character to not tell anybody that it was her driving and yeah. just say it was him. And yeah. Anyway, he just, he pretty much stops throwing parties after that himself. And yeah. as he was just dipping himself in the pool one day, the husband of Myrtle shows up on his doorstep and suspected that he killed myrtle yeah and so that husband kills gatsby yeah so gatsby wasn't being selfish or anything yeah, like that he was like, a really really decent yeah, guy but uh it's just, yeah i just gotta have to rewatch that movie because yeah. i don't remember the ending of it. i just i remember watching it and being like this ending doesn't make any fucking sense so it's but i don't remember anyway so main character knew the truth of behind Gatsby's death and no one else would ever yeah. basically know it. 
Anyways, uh, Evelyn's knows. world was soon come to an end. It was already far too late. If I see your son, I'll tell him that. I'll give him a stern telling off for not talking to you. Yes. <laughs> Evelyn looked over at me. Ryan moves amusement in her face. You tell him off. Oh, of course. When I want to get pissed off, I can get pissed I off. I will blow my top. Yeah. <laughs> your son will either be will either be crying or will be providing me donuts. Or he, I'll send him to the fiery gates of hell. Yes, really, I replied, drawing myself up to my full height, which unfortunately was not very high. So I did my best I could with what little I had. I can be a horrible nag when I want to be. Belle always told me that. Who's Belle? I never liked her very much. <laughs> Well, if you do happen to see my boy, I'd appreciate it. Said Evelyn. Tell him Eve sent you. Eve? That's right. My name's Evelyn, but my friends call me Eve. Even my kids call me that. Are we friends? I'm the great Eve. Sure, we are. I'm friends with all my students. I'll definitely be friends with you, eh? Uh, Lily, I said after a long pause. My name is Lily. Oh, ah. Uh... I think it was supposed to be UH rather than AH, but I think either works. Yeah, either works. Alright. Death. Chapter 13. Comes to those for death. <laughs> for those who seek it. Yeah. Uh, this is the epilogue. Yep, and I believe it's still it's me. It's still you. The young yeah. girl sits stiffly on the uncomfortable wooden pew. She holds her head high, her eyes fixed towards the front. It's the same terrible creature who probably doesn't even remember the last funeral or remember the fact that it's the Stop same Stop knowing people. what the story holds before No, us. this this wasn't in relation. It is the same priest as before. The one who conducted her mother's funeral, who kept getting her name wrong. At least he has the common courtesy to get this name right. I mean, somebody the second death in this family. Something about the way it falls from his thin lips seems off, though. Like he's placing the emphasis on the wrong syllables. He sounds like a foreigner trying to oh, speak they spell an unfamiliar wrong? language. No, I'm just making a joke. Oh. The priest's eyes are almost as cold as ice. There's no need to sacrifice his love. Is he perfectly? He good? hardly seems to blink. It's unnerving, just like me. She shivers, pressing her woolly black knees together. He really does look like the villain from Hunchback of Notre Dame. <laughs> that was what he'd said at the kitchen table over that dour game of Risk. Then again, when isn't Risk dour? Only it's one week risk. ago. It was a silly little joke. An attempt to ease the we heavy atmosphere. We should play Risk for Two Bros game night. No. God, no. <laughs> it hadn't been very funny, and she'd still laughed. They had both laughed together. She for those who want us to play Risk, subscribe now. <laughs> ah, fuck all of you, I don't care. She felt a bit guilty about it at the time, given the somber circumstances, but maybe she should have laughed more. Maybe if she had, her brother would have survived. If only he... Hazel's shoulders shake. She sniffs, wiping her eyes with her arm. It was suicide, undoubtedly. She had found him in the bathroom around 8 a.m. She wanted to brush her teeth, comb her hair, maybe try a new style, see if it impressed Cass when she saw him again. As soon as oh, she boy. entered the bathroom, the wooden door creaking open on its hinges, she wished she hadn't. She had known something was wrong before she had a chance to examine the body. And then he awoke at that moment. No. <laughs> the bathroom, <laughs> white and sparkling as ever, was filled with an unpleasant odor that made Hazel's stomach turn. It smelled like old nappies, a stench Hazel was had some familiarity with, given the amount of time she'd babysat for Mrs. Whitman's something. Her brother had been lying in the bathtub, wrapped in his ratty old dressing gown. He'd worn it when he was a teenager, before he went to university. It was navy blue, almost 20 years old, older than Hazel. She was staring up at the ceiling. Or he was staring up at the ceiling. <laughs> she, eyes, he he, he uh, switched genders. With eyes wide open. He, he switched genders before he yeah. croaked. Hazel. <laughs> that, the, that could explain a lot. But <laughs> Hazel stood in the doorway, staring at him for several minutes, hardly daring to move, hardly able to breathe. Hey. She approached him slowly. Hey. The stumbling gait of a sleepwalker. Maybe he'd fallen asleep in the, with his eyes open. Why would he be in the bathtub? couldn't be comfortable there why was he so still it was a prank right some kind of practical joke her brother didn't have a cynical sense of, or did have a cynical sense of humor but not even he would do something this mean-spirited especially not considering the circumstances hazel shuffled forward her breath catching in her chest she reached out her fingers brushing his shoulder ready to shake him 
is as cold as ice. Wake up. Snap out of it. It's not April Fool's Day. Yeah, we think this line is supposed to be in quotes. Um, uh, maybe. Or it's her thoughts. Eh. But those words died. Yeah. yeah. It was an overdose, the coroner said. Aspirin. Probably would have taken about four to six hours for him to finally die, slowly, agonizingly, in pain. Jesus. Yeah, that's agonizingly in pain. Gruesome. That, to me, that's that's the route you get when you choose to not smile. That you die a slow and painful death. Yeah, I'm not sure. Hazel couldn't imagine. Maybe we, yeah, we could try to do it backwards and do the bad ending then the good ending. But uh, while she had been asleep in her bed that night, dressed in her way to the poop pajamas, which is misspelled, her brother had been lying in the bathtub, bleeding internally throughout the night. Poor guy. <laughs> or maybe he'd fallen asleep before that happened. She hoped so. But his eyes had been wide open. <clears throat> Hazel winces and shakes her head. Why would her brother do something like that? He'd been cheerful, hadn't he? Or, well, not che cheerful, but he'd been coping. Her brother was a coper. That was what Hazel had always thought. He'd always seemed so mature to her, so adult, wearing shirts and ties, before uh, she'd even learned to put her own on her own dungarees. Maybe she'd been wrong. She must have been wrong. Why else would he? Now himself? am I wrong? Yes, he is. Yes, she is. <laughs> she really didn't uh, know that much about him. She'd been two years old when he left home, and she'd only ever saw him at large family gatherings, Christmases, sometimes Easter. Once or twice a year, she was lucky. Ooh, and always he looked older. Day. Why don't you ever seem to age? Oh, your father won't let me. <laughs> that, that was one of the best lines that Team Four Stars ever had. It was so, it was so fucking messed up. <laughs> He'd hardly been like a brother at all. In That's truth, a wife. You're getting a pedicure today. In truth, he was more like a stranger. But she loved him all the same. They were flesh and blood after. And see, the stupid thing is that makes the that makes the Bulma from uh. The show from the new movie make even more sense. <laughs> That's why she uses the dragon balls uh, to literally make herself look younger. Because if her mother ain't gonna fucking age, she ain't either. <laughs> I was hoping you could make my so buns. So fucking like... bullshit. <laughs> Sometimes they played board games together, and he often. And I like small Shenron's reaction puzzle. to one of those, and your buns are. Was his job really that stressful? And what did he say? Your much. buns are toasted. Or I don't something know. Like that. Was that why he did it? Maybe there wasn't a big reason. Maybe it was some kind of slow, malignant sadness that gradually kept upon its unsuspecting victims, rendering them unable to resist. Hazel didn't know. He didn't even know. Uh... She leans forward, her arms wrapped around her stomach. Her face is white. She imagines what it would feel. Don't imagine what it would feel like for your internal organs to shut down. That's not a good. No, thought that's not a good have. feeling. That's it's... a bad thought. When she was 13, she'd had appendicitis. Her mother had whisked her you away to the nearest hospital up? in less than half an hour, but it had been a busy Friday night, and it had taken around two hours just to the doctor to see her. The pain during that time had been excruciating. I have no idea how the fuck I got through this the first time, because there's times I'm rushing and I'm not getting <laughs> through the line, and times where I do the line, and then it's like five extra minutes. <laughs> Hazel thought she would never forget well, the Well, it's because we're going off on a tangent in the But video. not helpful, like right there. <laughs> Maybe sad things are like that, too. At the time, they seem insurmountable and impossible to overcome. It's very impossible, just like the continuation of this. <laughs> yeah, where it's going to take five minutes. It's like, what were we possibly talking about here? Who knows? Maybe we actually had a good, funny bit for once. Never. But given one or two years, the feelings fade away, replaced with little more than a DDLC and a vague now. memory. Physical pain doesn't last forever, no matter how much it hurts. Emotional it pain must be the same. Why couldn't her brother forever. bear it? Or maybe that's my, uh, naive. Maybe he had been trying this whole life, struggling against the inevitable. He just got tired of trying. That's, that is, that is the truth behind, uh, behind suicidal thoughts, guys. Uh, they yeah. are, uh, like, and that's where we're people who commit game. suicide are not giving up. They're, they are not, they're not just deciding one day that they want to die. 
It's they've spent their entire life resisting giving up. And they can't resist any longer. They just fail to keep going. Anyway, guys, I'm pretty sure we have to cut here and then we'll come back with the actual ending of the game. Yes, so we'll be right back. Okay, guys, we are back. Where on this screen, I believe, we have to press the zero, zero button. Zero button. And it specifically yeah. has to be the numpad zero button or this no, zero button. it's this zero button. Yeah, it's the here. zero button that's on the top of the keyboard. Yeah, not above the, P. the numpad. And then you get this. So these are the notes, which for some reason are here. Yeah, we... We give some weird reason of like... Uh, isn't it she? Yeah, sorry. She gives some weird reason about this. Uh, about like, oh, the bo completing both endings unlocks the epilogue and putting the notes at the same time as the epilogue wouldn't feel right. So just add it as an extra thing of like author notes after you play through the epilogue. Like it's it's not hard. You had a you had a locked option right above it. Just add another locked option. But yeah, just, but whatever. Just, we eventually stop reading this and we just say pause the read. Yeah. But yeah, so she shows off what the game currently looked like for text as well as yeah. So I I do uh, want to make clear. I do want to make clear that the new version of this game is an improvement over the old version of this game. However, it is a it is minimal improvements. It's like minimal art improvements and very little textual improvements. Yeah, we don't like the... It's it, There's something wrong with the characters' faces. Yeah, the characters' faces are very... Or just feel off. And here's the thing. It, it was off in the anime art, but anime is always off. Like... And you don't you don't think about it, but like anime eyes are extremely large. Your eyes are not that big, but with anime, that's just the artistic style. So you get used to it, and you don't notice it's wrong. It's just like yeah, that's fine. So because of that, and because the new version of the game is meant to look more realistic, the face looks more off because you made the rest of the body look better. <laughs> yeah. Like so, so anyways. Um, oh yeah, also this is supposed to be a uh, dating sim, I thought, or something. It's supposed to be yeah, some Yeah, she like, was writing this as a dating sim and then didn't or something. We Yeah, it's like something like we, that. We we kind of skimmed through it. There it was. <clears throat> Sh three cute shinigami. So in other words, this guy was going to write um girl. Su sorry, this girl was going to write Sakura Spirit. E right. Yeah. <laughs> so, whoops. Um um, so we don't know what the dandelion girl is, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, anyways. Also, the text, it's, it is better that the text now has a text yes. bar at the bottom, so that's an improvement, but. But, the, you don't you know who's reading yeah, sometimes. Yeah, you still don't know who the fuck's talking without reading the whole line. So it's like, or sometimes you still have a struggle to know who's talking. So it's like... But anyway, guys... You really... I, I haven't seen this girl's new games. Like, I know she has newer games. Yeah, she does. But I really hope that you fix it's this. It's Because this game it really is rough. All right. Even with the, the up res. So we did not hate this game. We thought it was pretty... Well, I it think was it was okay. average. Yeah, it it's, was it's average. Not a it's, it's not a bad game. I, I think my biggest problem with this game is that the... Like, outside of the text and, like, any art, text and art issues. is just the fact that... Is it the blank character? Yeah, it's like... The, the problem with this game is that there are no second chances. Mm -hmm. So there isn't much to the story. The character feels like pretty much an asshole throughout the entire game, except when talking about his ex. And then... The only other times that you get any good character moments is with Lily. So it's like, the character feels very, like, stilted because it just goes back and forth between asshole, sympathetic asshole, and then victim. But anyway, it's like, it's, it's like, yeah. anyway, guys, we pretty much 100% the game. We got all the achievements yep. and stuff, We got literally so. every achievement in the game, so there's not much to it. And I, I think this is when we finally give our opinions yeah. and stuff. And, and, and I would say, yeah, this is a game where I would say it is not worth playing it's a game that's like you watch it you really don't need to play it it's there's <laughs> it's not 
worth it. <laughs> there, there are better visual there novels. There are way better visual novels. Honey Pop is a better fucking visual novel than this <laughs> damn game. So, But that's beside the point. What is the point is that's it for this episode and this series. Yep. And we will come back next time with a new series. Woo! So until then, the future is very uncertain. What is certain is you guys are awesome. And there'll be more Two Bros Game Night tomorrow. See you then. Bye-bye.